Hey everybody, here we have Yevgeny Prigozhin's private jet and we're going to simulate a sabotage attack. This video may explain what we've seen in the footage of the incident and highlight why there's a strong belief that a small explosive charge in the rear of the aircraft was all that was needed to trigger this spectacular and sobering crash. So the aircraft itself was a twin-engine Embraer Legacy 600 business jet owned by Wagner Group. It was cruising at about 28,000 feet when it broke up for unknown reasons mid-flight and crashed in the Tavir region. Here we have the aircraft modelled in 3D and I've overlaid the centre of mass wing lift force and the tail's horizontal stabiliser forces. In straight and level flight for conventional aircraft, the centre of mass sits slightly in front of the wing's centre of lift. The pitch of the aircraft is then controlled by the amount of downforce created by the elevator control surfaces, as you can see here. Now, this sequence starts with the assumption that an event occurred which liberated the entire tail section from the aircraft. It's important to highlight here that random structural failure in modern aviation is just about non-existent and the very few times that it does happen, it's mostly the result of sabotage or negligent maintenance. Amongst aviation experts, sabotage is at the forefront of speculation. Let's assume there was an explosive device placed into the baggage compartment which is located in the fuselage cavity directly beneath where the tail section connects to the fuselage. The explosion is sufficient to destabilise the base of the tail section and breach the pressure hull, rapidly depressurising the cabin. As the empennage rips and tilts backwards, it deploys like an umbrella and separates from the aircraft. After this happens, the centre of mass moves slightly forwards, but critically the horizontal stabiliser is no longer providing the stabilising downwards force. This force imbalance causes the nose of the aircraft to then pitch down uncontrollably. What's important to note here is that this will happen in the space of say two to three seconds and the aircraft would still be moving at near its original cruising speed which is in the realm of about 700 kilometers per hour. Your stability is also lost at this point but the aircraft doesn't depart from its stable point in your as fast as pitch does so is of little consequence here. With the wings now at 90 degrees to the airflow and at these speeds the airframe would now experience a violent deceleration. Conservatively, a shock load of roughly 4 to 5 G. Any occupants without their belts fastened and any other objects in the cabin would impact the cabin's ceiling quite quickly, possibly causing significant injury or incapacitation. According to the aircraft flight manual, the Legacy 600 wings aren't able to sustain anywhere near this amount of aerodynamic force in the downwards direction, and both wings would have rapidly arrive at their structural breaking point. One wing will fail slightly earlier than the other, which then alleviates the force on the remaining wing as it retreats from the oncoming airflow. This is likely why only one wing is missing from the aircraft. This is kind of like how breaking a wishbone at Thanksgiving will result in a larger and a smaller bone. It won't break into three separate bones. Nearly all incidents involving the failure of the wing structure involve only the loss of one wing for this reason. With the loss of one wing, the aerodynamic centre shifts to the remaining wing, and as expected, the centre of mass and aerodynamic centre align with the oncoming airflow like a weather vane. After a further short period, the aircraft will slow to its terminal velocity and be travelling vertically downwards to the ground. The jet engines may still be running as the fuel system could still be drawing fuel from the remaining fuel tanks, but the effect of the jet's thrust on the aircraft will have little impact at this point. The aircraft continues pitching and rolling motions from the turbulent airflow, with the remaining wing trailing mostly behind as it continues to weather vane in the oncoming airflow. The occupants of the aircraft, who were unfortunate enough to have their seatbelts fastened earlier, are likely still conscious for the 30 second journey to the ground. Considering the circumstances surrounding this incident and the conduct of the investigation, it's unlikely we'll ever know with any certainty what actually happened here. But, most importantly, what do you think?